What's up guys, Marcus here from Studio One Expert, and today we're gonna to be having a little bit more of an in-depth look behind the scenes of the Presence XT Editor. So uh, the Presence XT Editor is a paid add-on that you can get that basically allows you to open up the ability to access the editor for Presence XT. And with this, you can do all sorts of things like program your own sample libraries or sound design patches. And we've got a lot of different options and a lot of different flexibility in this sampler. So like I mentioned before, this sits somewhere, well, at least in my opinion, this sits somewhere between EXS24 and Contact. So uh, I'm behind the scenes here, and let's just have a look at the basics. First of all, we've got some different display options. So we can show the program details, and these can be entered. We can choose you know, an icon for a library. We can give the actual program name. Um, we can enter a name here. We can enter a description. Uh, we have the author. I have the Studio One as a generator. I can enter some keywords. And then we have access to the description and things like the icon and the program name. We have access to that through the front panel here. And this front panel also allows us, when we do, when we get into scripting, we have a script editor over here. When we get into scripting, I'm just going to open up another session over here. You can see that on this side of things that we have access in this area over here to map out certain things and we can add knobs and, and parameters and stuff like that so we can see this information. So let's hop back over to the main patch over here and I'm gonna open up the editor and we'll go into the edit tab here and I'm just gonna take this and let's just increase this size so we can see a little bit more here. Okay, so we've got a couple different views here. First of all, we've got a sp different split views where we can toggle the layout between being you know, top and bottom and left and right over here. So it's really, this is a personal preference. And then we've got different options for what we're viewing here. So I can view all sorts of different parameters here, depending on what I wanna work with, right? So I have all these different parameters here. I'm going to leave this to main right now because this gives us pretty good access to some, you know, the parameters that we're going to be working with. And I'm going to push this back to left and right so I can see more real estate for my split here. So these are my zones. I've got five layers in this particular instrument over here. And I can also go into a list view. And then we can also, you know, define our criteria. So if I wanted to search for stuff, let's say for instance, I wanted to search for all my velocity layer two things, I can just enter this. And now depending on which layer I've selected, I'm only viewing these ones over here. Or for instance, I could use the second number, 50. And then I can refine my search. So if I wanna deal with specific zones, I can basically refine my search. So if I wanted to add or edit any of these details, let's pull this over to the side here. And the, under the main section here, we have the layer name. And then we've got some different options here for triggers, note off trigger. This would be for doing things like a release trigger. And we've got gain, pan, zone shift, and tuning over here. And then if I go over to the main window over here, you can see that we've got our sample name. I've got some parameters here, which allow me to basically click and addition these as I'm selecting the different zones. So I can click this little speaker icon. Right? And then I have some other options here, which allows the input trigger selection. So if I'm playing a sample patch, that'll actually see what's being played over here. And then I can toggle between the parameters and the wave. And on the individual waves here, we can do things like adjust the zoom and we can adjust the in and out points. And if I had any looping points, I could adjust those as well. So these are on a per zone or per sample basis, we can access these. So let's go ahead and close this quickly for a second. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna toggle back to this section over here and we'll open it up again. And let's go ahead and play this. So I'm gonna select all of my layers. I'm gonna make sure everything's visible. Could go to my grid mode. Could just select individual layers. Okay, so this is an instrument that I'm porting over. I have a library, uh, sample library company that I develop and I have libraries available under contact. 
But what I'm doing right now is I'm actually porting them over to Presence XT. Now, whether that's just for my personal use or whether that's something that I may open up for sale, I'm not sure at this point. But anyways, that's the library we're listening to right now. So that's a Celtic Harp library. Um, and let's just scroll over one more marker further and I'm just going to play something else quickly. Let's hop into our list view so you can see all these different notes being triggered here. And we've got lots of different options in terms of our loop start and the loop mode, crossfade, gain, panning. We can set the round robin mode, which is really nice. We can set the play mode and then we can see the path that these are on. So I'm just going to go ahead and play from here. parameters. And these are the actual waves. You can see the changing as it's being triggered here. If I hop back into player, you notice that I'm using the reverb that's built into Presence XT. And I wanted to have a look at something that's a little bit more in depth or a little bit more advanced. So let's open up another sample library I have over here. I'm gonna close this just for a second. What we're looking at here is a perform a chord, and this is a chord organ, and it's got a set of keys, which you can play as an organ, but it also has a set of buttons on the left side, and it mimics pretty much the sound of an accordion. So you can play different chord progressions with the left hand, and then you can play melodies with the right hand. So what I've got is I've got two MIDI events over here, and they're both assigned or mapped out to the same instance of presence. So if I open up presence over here, let's open up the editor, and I'm just gonna expand this view here. You'll see that we have a lot of different groups here. So I've got my sustain groups. I've got four round robins or four variations for this. And these ones over here, I've got this set to play. So if I was to play this, select this zone over here, it's automatically gonna play. And the same thing on even for my release triggers or my attack triggers, if I clicked one of these, hard to hear that. Maybe we'll do one of the release triggers here. And then if I expand this section over here, you'll notice that these are set to a note off trigger and I've adjusted the gain and whatnot on these. So these are set to be release triggers. So this happens, I have some that happen on the attack and some when I let go, we're gonna hear that release trigger. So the, here are my release trigger groups. So I could go to group two. And those are all set to be release triggers. Now on my left hand side, I actually have the sustain button. So my left hand, these are actual chords. Okay, so let's hear what this instrument sounds like when it's played together. So I've got just a section. This up top here is the actual melody on the right hand. And this one down here, this is the actual chord. So these are the chords that are being triggered. And it's being, you know, played because these chords are mapped out. So let's open this up here. I'm going to hop back to the top. Let's make all of our groups active so we can see the different. I'm going to stay in list mode. And I'm going to go ahead and play this. hear the button noise and everything. Again, we're using the reverb that's built into Presence XT. We'll let that loop one more time. This time we'll view it in grid mode. Okay, so again, same thing here. I filled out the program information. I basically created all my groups, which have all my different layers. And then on each one of these groups here, if I was to just select this one, I'm only gonna get the zones that I've placed in this group. And I can view, the, view these in either list or grid mode. <laughs> And then I can also view the parameters over here. 
And then of course we can use our search functions over here. So if I wanted to see everything that was a C sharp, I could just click C sharp. Now I'm viewing just this group C sharp, or I could view all four of these. And then I can basically make adjustments to the key low, key high, you know, the root. Um, I can adjust the velocities of these. I can set the start time, the end time, the loop mode, determine whether it's round robin, determine its play mode, all sorts of things like that. So, you know, the big thing about this presence XT versus something like EXS24 really comes down to the fact that we have the scripting engine, which is a JavaScript based scripting engine. And then if you have a look at the player over here, like I said, we have this section over here, we can actually map out, uh, you know, articulations, key switches, we can have these parameters over here, we can designate these different dials to actually adjust the parameters of anything that we have available in presence XT. So and that all is based on on mapping things out and writing the code for that. So this is where this kind of really stands apart from presence XT. And you know, it's just a really, really nice sampler to be able to create your own custom libraries if you're into that type of thing. While we're on the scripting editor, um, I have a pretty good, decent grasp of scripting when it comes to contact. I've got a good basic understanding of that. But what I'm going to do is I've reached out to somebody in the Studio One community that uh, I'm sure a lot of you are very familiar with. And I'm going to do a part two of this video where he and I have a chat. And what he's going to do is he's going to go a little bit more in depth into the scripting and give us a couple practical examples of some of the types of things that we could do. So I think this is a pretty good overview on seeing, you know, how powerful this is and, and what we can do behind the scenes with the editor in terms of adjusting, you know, all of our parameters, making edits, you know, start point, end point, loops, anything like that. But then in video two, we're going to get a little bit more in depth into the scripting. So anyways, hope, hopefully I catch you guys in that one. And I hope you guys got something from this and we'll talk to you later. Cheers.